Zack, Zack, I've got to go out to the outback. I've got to go on an adventure. Oh, uh, an, an adventure? Well, this is yes. very, very sudden. Uh, what, what, why do you want to go do that? What, what is motivating you right now to be so enthusiastically pointed mm. towards the outback? I need to go to the outback where, the, where nothing lives and it's just flat lands. Because, you see, last time I was out in the bush, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Which you regularly do. Which I regularly go out in the bush and yes. I starve myself. Yes. I've got um, no food. Like a sane human being. <laughs> yes. I go out in the Australian bush and I starve myself. Just like, just like old Crocodile Dundee would have done. Speaking of crocodiles, sometimes I fight one. Mm. Sometimes I purposefully get bitten by a snake. Anything that'll start me mm. sort of like hallucinating. And that's what I did, yeah. right? I went out in the bush. Uh-huh. I wasn't eating. I wasn't drinking for like three days. And I got bitten by mm. a snake. And then I saw... A mirage. Whoa. Mm. Wait, so you know it was a mirage? Yes, I, I saw a mirage, and guess what was in the mirage? I don't know, like, y- unicorns and, and, and... A beautiful woman, Zach, was in oh, the mirage. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to the outback to find her, because she exists. <laughs> but, hold up, hold up. But you saw... <laughs> What you know as a mirage. Yeah. It was a mirage. This is correct. And I also was, um, I was bitten by a snake and I was starving yep. and I was hallucinating. Yeah. Yes. So you saw something that very clearly isn't real, <laughs> but have now planned to go and find mm. said woman that you know for a fact probably doesn't exist. I need to go out to the outback. And you you know what I'm going to do in the outback? I'm going to fight. <laughs> you going to fight? Is that just yes. full stop? Yep. Like, anything that comes to you, it's, mm-hmm. just a, it's just a koala chilling on a tree. And you're like, koala comes up and I hit it, but make sure I go on a glove, because koala's got chlamydia. Yeah. See, you know, you know, dum-dum. You know, dummy dumpster. Yeah, you want to come with? No, no. Oh. Not at all. I'm not coming with you. This, this is a death wish. <laughs> you're just going out in the bush to die. <laughs> That's all you're doing. Well, uh... That's the plot of this week's movie. <laughs> yeah, except without the Australian app pack bit. Hello, welcome to Oldie Buddy Goody. Uh, it's a podcast where we spend all year watching movies from the year 1987. We've had one good one and one awful one. And this week, we are going to see what this week's movie was, if it was good or bad. <laughs> wow. Concept. Wow, you really, you really tried to skirt the line. You didn't mm. want to, you didn't want to throw it either way. I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna say it. It was uh, eh. it was it was okay. It was all right. It was all right. It had its moments, that's for sure. Uh, my name's Sandro, and that other voice is Zach, and we are reviewing the most obscure film we have ever done. Yeah, a Hong Kong martial arts film called Mirage. Yeah. Why did we do this film? Why was this an option? I heard that it had some of the best action ever in any movies, and it kind of did. Yeah, it had some really good action. Mm. I was surprised. Yeah, that was one of of the things I was going to talk about, was that the action was kind of good. Yeah, I mean, sure, the story (laughs) doesn't make a lot of sense, and is quite bad. And there's a love triangle for like 10 minutes that is super annoying. And it's hard to tell between the bad guys and the good guys when they're fighting, and you're not sure who's winning because you don't know which one is which. Yeah, and the the picture quality was bad, and the audio quality gave me a headache. Yep. It was pretty good, though. (laughs) At least you watched the subs. Yes. Why did you... I was like, I told you, hey, I'm watching subs. You, like That's what I immediately was like, all right, I'm switching to dubs. Why? Why would you purposefully put yourself through those well, dubs? Because that way we don't miss any of the dumb moments. Oh, I the guess. Dumb. I have true. a single quote, which I copied down. The rest of it was just, it was just bad dubs. I think I've got... Um, probably the same quote because it was pretty funny in yes. both versions. It was what I think it is. Yes, it probably is. Yeah. But it's it's definitely the uh, way to introduce a character. Oh, yeah, it is sure. what I thought it is. Yeah, it's that yeah. scene. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to compare quotes. Uh, yeah, look, it was okay. I enjoyed a lot of this movie. And then for some of it, oh. I was like, the movie's just kind of stopped for half an hour. Nothing's happening. Yeah. It was weird. The plot was weird. The characters 
were weird. Yep. But they're not, like, overly weird. It's not, like, weird as in, like, oh, this guy has, I don't know. Chainsaw for f- teeth. Yeah, exactly. It's mm. It wasn't that. It was just, like, didn't make any sense. No. Why, why, why are we going in... Why are we following a mirage? Why does he have <laughs> pictures of the mirage? How do you take a picture of a mirage? If it's actually a mirage, does it exist or not? That could have been a translation issue, the whole mirage thing. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, either way, even if it's like a vision or something, how do you take a picture of that? Except that they all saw it? Was it mass hysteria? What happened? Maybe it was some reflection, a reflection off the sand and the cliffs. Of just this one lady on her horse, and she just stood there for like 20 seconds for all of them to watch? Maybe this is a world of magic. We don't know. Apparently every single person in this world knows uh-huh. martial arts. Every single person yes. does. Well, that's that's a classic of, of uh, old martial arts, mm. like Chinese film. It's just the main characters are automatically kung fu masters, no matter what background they come from. You know, they're working in a, a food uh, industry. Yes. Skating around serving food. Oh, they're also kung fu masters and are undefeated. Anyway, we'll, we'll go through the film in a second. Uh... But first, as we have been talking about all year, the podcast is currently powered by the Dead Dad Club on Patreon. Boo, boo, boo. Yes, yes. Is that dropping next week? Hang on, when's this episode coming out? Yeah, next week. In exactly a week from now, we will be forced to watch The NeverEnding Story 2 and then talk about it for a little bit. Mm. And then you'll be able to hear it if you sign up to the Dad Dad Club on Patreon. Yeah, Sandro, let it be known, is part of the minority that think the never-ending story isn't so good. So we'll find out Mm. uh, what he thinks of the sequel to said movie, which I don't remember very much, but I'm pretty sure is not going to be as good. No, probably not. And I have been talking to some other of our patrons uh, and and listeners, and they reckon after never-ending story 2, we should do Police Academy 2. We can do that. That's all right. It has my, that one character, the mountain or whatever he's called. Uh, but, but let's, yeah, but let's do this week's one. This is probably going to be a short one anyway, because there's not too much to talk about here anyway. Yeah, let me throw this out there. Uh, this morning I woke up and tried to remember the plot of this movie, <laughs> and I couldn't. So I looked at my notes and was like, oh, yeah, that was the plot. That's it. <laughs> I remember moments of the plot, which I went, what the flippity doodah is going on here? Well, why, why is this character doing this? Specifically the lady. Why is she so randomly evil than not at points? What is going she on? She murders a horse and drinks its blood. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Why? She's really mean. <laughs> yeah. She's just kind of an asshole. Yeah. There's some weird stuff in this film. There's some yeah. very weird stuff. That's what I'm talking about. It's kind of weird. Speaking of weird, the other options for this week, were they also weird? I know two of them were. What was the other movies? It was Jocks, uh, a teen comedy, Mischief in Las Vegas, whatever. Uh, The Stepfather, a serial killer marries someone, then kills them. When his stepdaughter starts to get suspicious, she discovers he has many identities. Uh, It's based off a real-life killer. That could be cool. That could be good. It could be cool. And The Fringe Dwellers. I watched it. Oh, he watched it. Uh, It's the first Australian movie to feature Indigenous Australians in all the main roles. It's about a young girl who dreams of life outside her family camp. Is it any good, Sandra? It is okay. It's okay. Okay. It's definitely a notable Australian <laughs> movie, obviously, because it's the first yet to feature mm. Indigenous Australians in all the main roles. But there's some story stuff that is weird, and I didn't really like elements mm. of where it went. Uh, it's shot not very well. It's kind of plain. Ah. Uh, the acting's good. There's some very funny moments, uh, but it's like, it's okay. It's an okay film. So I would give mm. it a goodie, but it's not, it's not great, mm. but it is definitely notable. Okay. It was all right. Yeah. Speaking of all right, Mirage. 
Released 23rd of January, 1987. Fun fact, if you Google Mirage 1987, this movie won't come up. What will come up is an album by the rock band Meat Puppets called Mirage, which came out in April of 1987. Yeah, fun fact, this movie was incredibly hard to find anything on. Yep. Because it's an obscure thing that no one cares about. Why did we do this movie? Why was this an option on the list, Sandra? This is one of those films that I think it's only on VHS. I don't think it's gotten a a DVD release. And that VHS version was only recently rediscovered and put on the internet. Mm. So this is a forgotten movie, basically. And we're kind of on the forefront of rediscovering it. It's definitely a lot easier to find if you use its, uh, its, like, other name. Hai Shin Shenlu. Yeah, that's it. Once I discovered... Oh, yeah, it has a different name. Then it's a lot easier to find because it actually had... You know. Yeah, there's more information about it if you use that name. Which is why both names are in the title of the episode. Ooh, Mark Ooh. So it's directed by Su Ming uh, Shu, who is uh, also the the sidekick character, Mao. He plays... Oh, really? Wait, he's Mao. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He has acted and directed in many different martial arts movies before. Uh, the main character, Tong, is played by Rongguang Ru, who had a big role in the Karate Kid reboot. Ah, Mm. Yes, that one. He's also done good films, because he was in Iron Monkey with Donnie Yen, which is pretty good as well. So, he's on stuff. Nice. He's good. Pasha Romani is the bandit queen, and then also Connie Khan plays Aneta. Uh, but those two, I had couldn't find anything on. Like, the majority of this mm-hmm. movie. Don't know stuff. Does it have a Rotten Tomatoes page? No, n- not really. It's got IMDb, though. 7 out of 10, based off, like, 65 ratings, and an average score of 3.5 on Letterboxd. But people on Letterboxd like watching really obscure movies. That's that what that whole platform mm, is. So yeah, that's their whole thing. Can you trust them? No, they're wrong. I'm on there. Uh-huh. I'm usually wrong. Yes, yes. that's a fact. Mm. See, Sandra gets it. Uh, no idea how much this cost, and pff, I don't know enough to guess honestly. But apparently, it made two million. Oh. But that's according to a very dodgy website oh. that I don't think is very accurate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, two million sounds like it made some money. I guess. I feel like they wouldn't have spent much money except on explosives. Oh, yeah. The like the special effects. Good. That's the only thing they really actually spent money on. The costumes, I guess, maybe a little bit because it is set in the 30s. No. No, um, the costumes I hated. Really? The bad guys and the good guys were barely distinguishable, and I had a real hard time at the the start figuring out who was who. <laughs> it's because they were all wearing robes. All the bad guys had hats, <laughs> except when they didn't have hats. Oh, yeah. And then some uh, the good guys had bandanas. There was a point where all of the good guys were dressed in blue. Was that the start? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... N- yeah. I don't know. <laughs> It was very hard to distinguish who was who. Also, when was this set? (laughs) 1930s. 1930s. They don't tell you. They just kind of expect you to be like, oh, it's about the Silk Road. So it's set around that time when this was happening. Yeah. So they don't tell you. They really should have. At the at the start, I thought this was like going to be like, oh, it's an ancient Chinese movie. And then everybody pulls out guns and starts shooting each other. I'm like... This is suspicious. And then one guy hops on a motorbike and I'm like, ah, hmm. ah, that, that jumped in a couple of years, couple of millennium. It's set, I think, like around the time that Indiana Jones is set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense once you see the helicopter. Yes. Um, that, yeah, you know. But anyway, we'll go through the movie. Um, it starts off, uh, there's not too much to say about the font. It's just big yellow font. It looks pretty good. Yep. Uh, the adventure music that plays at the start is pretty cool. Mm. Did you like the music? Yeah, I was about to say, I liked the music throughout this movie. I thought the music was good. I had no complaints. I didn't think it was particularly, you know, amazing. No. But I thought it was quite good. They don't, like, reuse that main theme that much either. Like, it comes back every mm. now and then, but only when it's, like, really important. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't overuse it either. Which, which is, is good, good, which is good. Oh, also, there were no taglines for the movie. That's why we didn't do a tagline bit. There's no taglines. Mm. But if you were to make a tagline, what would it be? Um, we gotta chase that mirage, boys, dab. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> really hate that. Oh. Hey, you know what we should do? We should chase something that we know doesn't exist. Hey, about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, what's a good tagline? A question of sanity. Mm. A picture in the desert 
Is it true? No, that's terrible. It's almost like a haiku, but it's bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's awful. <laughs> um, that's a bad porridge right there. It's awful porridge. <laughs> that's terrible porridge. Oh. What happens when you chase the mirage? Ooh. That's probably what it would be an actual tagline. Anthony isn't your typical bottle baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a great a tagline. tagline. <laughs> that's an amazing tagline. <laughs> I didn't know I think of that. Uh, so the basic premise is there are these Russian refugees that have uh, crossed over to China and they're holding up the Silk Roads. They're bandits and they're robbing all the caravans. They're real mean uh, people. I was going to say real mean blokes, but they're led by... Spoilers! They're led by a bandit queen. And she's the Mirage. Uh, but also psychotic. Yes, she's also insane. Yes. She's also completely crazy. It opens up with a caravan crossing... And then bandits attack, and within the first, like, three minutes, there's, like, ten explosions. It's great. Yes, it's great. So, you, the everybody pulls out guns at this point. Yeah. And this is you when you're like, oh, guns. <laughs> Alrighty, then. Mm. Um, and then they all start fighting with kung fu. Yep, and swords. And swords. Swords... Yes, swords, guns, and kung fu. That's that's all you need to know. Oh. Uh, there's a guy, the classic uh, one guy who just has grenades. That's all he does. <laughs> yes. And so he starts piffing grenades. So we get a lot of explosions. And then, um, what's his face? The sidekick guy, director boy. Uh, he runs up and, uh, like, pulls the pins off the grenades mm. that on the guy's chest. And he's like, whoa, whoa, and then, like, pushes him over, I think? Yeah, he stuffs the grenades into his chest, pushes him down a hill. Yeah, pushes him down a cliff so he can't, like, throw them off. So he's yeah. like, oh, and then he explodes. <laughs> that good. explosion was very funny. <laughs> good stuff. I like how the main character, he's there, his name is Tong, he's like a photographer, he is wearing a hat, and his hat never falls off. For the majority of this fight, his hat's always on. Mm. But then, right when the battle is starting to is starting to end, and the good guys have won, there's some shimmering in the distance, further down this canyon they're in. It's not just shimmering, it's like bright flashes for some reason. Bright flashes of light... And then the canyon turns into a projector. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Does it? Kind of no. Is that how it works? We we get a we get a wide shot of the canyon mm. and then through the canyon we see a giant like picture. Yep. Yep. Just superimposed in this canyon. Yep. Through mm-hmm. the magic of of special effects. Wow. Incredible. It's a beautiful woman on a horse. Yep. And Tong's like, I'm gonna take a picture. He get pulls out a camera. Yeah. Click click. And I'm like, ah, cameras exist. Well that puts it in around <laughs> this point in time. <laughs> so anyway, he goes back to his house and he tells his publisher mm. that he quits his photography job. He's like, I'm not taking photos anymore because I'm gonna go out to the desert and I'm gonna find this person that I saw in mm-hmm. this mirage. And his publisher is like are you okay? <laughs> yeah. That's a weird thing to do. His publisher is the most sane person <laughs> in this entire movie. It's like, what? That's a terrible idea. Why are you doing that? And then he goes to see his best friend, Mal. This this uh, one long scene of them sort of talking and discussing these things has uh, quite a few quotes that Mm. you could take. I took one, which is my favourite quote of the movie. Is it the potato quote? Yes. Yes. It's the sweet potato quote. There's a couple quotes before the potato quote. Uh, There's one Mm -hmm. that really stood out, which is where Tong is like, I want a horse. And Mao's like, you should be a professional rider. I would. Like, riding is my greatest love. But the thing is, you see, I'm fat. So I guess I'm going to have to settle to just being a groom. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what he yes, said. Oh my God, what? What? I don't know. Okay, I'm glad I'm glad he said that in your version as well. Because mm. it's so dumb. This whole scene, I'm so glad that you also had these lines. Yeah. Because it sounded so weird when the English <laughs> voice actor said them. There were strange lines, but it, but but yeah, the potato quote. What's the potato quote? This yeah, so they they're talking about their childhood, mm. and he um he brings up this fact because it's just as he's like, oh, you're going off to chase this mirage. This is just like your sweet potato phase as a kid. 
I told you it would make you fart, but you didn't listen. <laughs> yeah. Um, because our main character is very stubborn. Yes. As we are told. That is basically what uh, he says in the in the subs as well. It's, yep. you've liked potatoes since you were a kid. You knew it caused gas, but you didn't listen. Ah, so interesting. So it's slightly different. Slightly different. Yeah, was yours potatoes or sweet potatoes? I think mine was just potatoes. Huh, mine was sweet potatoes. Interesting. interesting. How about that? I think the idea is they're less American, so it sounded <laughs> foreign. Right. Yeah. They're trying to make the film more... Yep, great. Love that. Yes. So, uh, they go into the city at night, they go to a bar, uh, and they run across Annetta, who is going to show them how to get to the area where uh, this Mirage lady is from. Mm. She doesn't agree to help them out uh, until some people attack them, and then she's forced to leave the city because the people will keep attacking them, I guess. I guess that's why she leaves. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's it's a fun action scene. I like I like the the they're flying around on motorbikes. There's a bit of bike foo. There's there's uh, she, he tries to pick her up on the motorbike and what's his face puts her puts her on the motorbike, but he speeds off just a second too early and she's just kind of put onto the ground. <laughs> yeah. For some reason that was dumb. That's all right. There's some flips and some tricks on the bike as well, which is pretty cool. Around the city. I believe it ends with, like, them escaping in some sort of rickshaw motorcycle combo that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was fun. I liked it. Then it's just kind of a montage. They arrive in a town. They get some camels and horses. They travel to another place. I, I forgot to mention the camels. In the first scene, some of the camels get shot. There's a lot of dead animals in this movie, I'm going to say. Now... I was going to bring this up during the horse scene, but yeah, we'll talk about it now. Do you think they actually yeah. killed animals for that? Because I know that, you know, in the 80s, particularly for, like, non-Hollywood films, there weren't as many laws in terms of, like, health and safety. Wouldn't be surprising if they killed some animals for a movie. No, I don't think they killed the horse. I, I think they may have killed a goat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they killed that goat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't think any other animals were specifically harmed. The horse was hyperventilating, though, and you don't get a horse to do that unless... I guess they could have purposely, purposely like, stressed out the horse. Yeah, I think that's what they did. It's still they purposely bit, yeah. stressed out the horse, which isn't good at all, but I don't think they actually <laughs> murdered it. <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> I would hope yeah. they didn't. But yeah, they shoot a lot of camels, but that would have been with blanks anyway, so they're probably fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It was just special effects. I'm just like, these poor camels, having a rough one. There's some scenes where people fall out of buildings and then land in an explosion, and I'm pretty sure the yelling is for real when they're like, ah, I think that might be for real, because mm. I don't know how they would have done that back then mm. <laughs> without it being an actual explosion. So yeah, there's some, there's some crazy stuff in this movie. Now, this is the point in the film where it stops for half an hour. Mm. Uh, because the, why continue on with your movie when you can just have half an hour of, of, of nothing? <laughs> of nothing. Although, although, mm. the dance scene, though, mm. that was, that was, that was some, some tight jams with the boys. Yeah. With the boys, we jamming. They arrive in Annetta's village and meet her dad right in the time mm. of a competition. What is the competition? Uh, so we, we, you know, you know goats, yeah? Yes. What if we had just like a dead goat? Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, and then the idea was everybody rides around on a horse and just tries to grab the goat. Oh. And get it up on the podium. Couldn't you do that with, like, a towel or a basket of bread? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be good when we see a flailing dead goat <laughs> being grabbed by, by people. Yeah, that was weird. Definitely, I think, at the end of this, we have to give this the dead goat <laughs> award. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What that means, we'll find out by the they, end. They killed that goat. They really did kill that goat. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, bandits show up and ruin the competition, so Tong wins it by riding a motorcycle. Yep. And grabbing the goat. Now, there aren't any rules to stop this from happening. Yep. 
because he's technically riding, right? They really just stop the movie for ten minutes. <laughs> they really just stop the film. Ah, uh, no, no, I like the idea. It was just really, yeah. eh, whatever. I, I like, I like that he just comes in on a motorbike. What, what are they gonna do? They're on a horseback. Motorbike just swoops in. He grabs it, and it's like, "Good luck chasing me." Yeah. And then he wins the competition, and so he wins a horse. He wins a fancy horse. But then he also wins Thank you. Aneta as a wife. Yeah. So that's cool. But he doesn't he don't want that. He wants weird mirage lady. Yeah. But Aneta, though, she does love him. After the, the montage they spent together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. She's like, I'm not going to help you find this weird mirage lady. I'm leaving the gang. And so she leaves. Oh, they have such a dramatic... They have such a dramatic, like... She's like, I can't follow you questing after someone else. You know? <laughs> and it's, it's very dramatic. And I was like, I don't care. There's too much story in this in this. Too much section. story in my Boom Boom movie. <laughs> I want... I want Kung Fu and Boom Boom. Where is Kung Fu and Boom Boom? Yeah. I need I need Michael Bay to come in here and just get oh. rid of all this story garbage. No, the, the problem is he would then add the military. The the, the mil- we've known about mirages since they first popped up. <laughs> We're gonna use mirages to take over the alien. No, planets. the problem is Michael Bay added too much story to his Boom Boom movies. Yeah, he would make this Boom Boom movie four hours long. Yeah, yikes! And then he'd shoot it in IMAX. <laughs> And then he would have, like, seven different plot lines and flesh out none of them. Yeah, and they would have a scene where he's like, you finished the whole plate of donuts. Anyway. She leaves the crew, but then Mal's like, aw, I love her. And there's a love triangle in this action boom boom movie. Yep. I think it annoyed me more than it annoyed you then. Yeah, no, no, no. I got really annoyed. I was like, this is what? Why? Now, why did it annoy you? Please, let's go into detail here, Sandra. Because this movie is about a man traveling mm-hmm. through adversity uh-huh. to find someone he saw in a canyon projector. Yeah, yeah. No, so far so reasonable. And so I want him traveling from A to B. Yep. And instead this movie's like, yes, travel from A to B. But also a half an hour gap in the middle of the movie where there's a competition with a dead goat and then also a love triangle. <laughs> and that's, I was like, that's also... <laughs> uh, yeah, look. <laughs> Look, look, it's, that's the journey. That's the idea is it's Mm. like the journey on the way. That is the journey on the way. Uh, They had a weird love triangle. I was like, uh, I was very uninterested in it. It was like, oh yeah, they both love this girl. But then uh, this guy also loves her, but she loves this other guy. And it's like, I don't, I don't care. I really don't care. The thing is, though, like, it doesn't matter. Because as soon as this section's over and they're back to finding the Mirage, if they don't bring it up again. None of this comes up again. Well, it sort of resolves itself in the end, doesn't it? It's bad. I don't like it. Ah, I, I, I liked the idea. I liked the idea of it. Ah, I, I think it was fine. Because cause the whole idea is instead of loving the person he should be loving... He's trying to quest after this, you know, mirage and other things, which is a terrible idea. And by the end of the movie, it's like, well, this was a dumb idea. Why did I do this? <laughs> yeah. You know, sort of situation. This is the message part of the movie. Yes. Don't chase after mirages. Yeah, don't. Stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. What? Mm. What does that mean? So anyway, they're on the road again. On road again. That's a bad song. Yeah, well, you also brought up a bad <laughs> song, so I can do that too. Uh, there's more fighting. The bandits attack them, mm. uh, but Mao manages to escape uh, yes. during the chaos. He escapes during the chaos of the fight, but Tong does get knocked out mm. and taken captive by the bandits. Yeah. Uh, they didn't kill him, though, because they were impressed by his fighting skills. And so the chief announces... That uh, that Tong's gonna have to fight their best warrior, and if he succeeds against their best warrior, he and all his men can leave. But what happens, Sandro, if he doesn't succeed? He dies. 
They they all die. They all they get all die. killed. Yes. The, the 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 thing was that the the the, the they all get to go free if he wins, or they all get executed if he loses. <laughs> if he loses, because he'll be dead too, though. So yeah, it's, yeah. I yeah. mean, it won't be much of a problem for him at no. the time because he'll already be dead. It's fine for him. In fact, he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, this is an easy pick. Yeah. I get to either live or die. <laughs> these all the all these other people who could get to live, nah, fuck them. I I want a chance to live. So uh, yeah, this warrior shows up. Uh, and they're wearing a suspicious mask, and we as the audience are like, that's the Mirage. It's pretty obvious. Yes. Uh, once you see the ponytail. Um, <laughs> yeah. But also, uh, I think she's also the chief. Yes. Because it's like, we all fight our best warrior, and it's like, who's your best warrior? And they go, it's our chief. The chief is the best warrior. So, yeah. They fight a bit. It's a sword fight. They fight. It's great. Oh, there's a great part where he gets slow mo thrown against some pottery and he just crashes into yes! some pottery. I was gonna bring up the pottery as well. I'm so glad you brought it because the pottery it's like they're full of water and mm. it gets splashed. It's great. It looks very good. So she knocks him down and does like a come on, let's keep fighting, and then he knocks her down and like disarms her. And she's like, oh damn! But then he. F- for for no reason, he passes the sword back to her. Oh yeah, because he want um, huh? Yep. Yeah. So he wants an honorable fight, right? Yes. But also, he has the lives of literally everyone riding on him right now, and he just handed the enemy back their sword. Yes. He should have just killed her, but for the sake of the movie, he has to let her live. So that he can discover that this is the person he was looking for. Yeah, because then they climb up some poles and they're fighting on the top of these poles. Yeah. And he manages to cut away her mask and it is Mirage Queen of the Desert. Her name is Mirage Queen Desert. Her name is Gazanova, which is even better. Gazanova is a great name. Gazanova, that's a great name. I I had a dog named that. We just called him Gaza. Oh. Did you kill him and then play a weird game where you had to hold him to the corpse on a horse? No, that's fucked up. <laughs> Good. That's fucked up, dude. No, Gaza lived a long, happy life. He ate yeah. snakes, you know, oh. wrestled crocodiles. I think she then cuts open his satchel or something and then all the photos fall out. And she's like, how did you get photos of me? Yeah, it's it's pretty much he gets, like, defeated because he's distracted. Oh, my God, it's Mirage Lady. Whoa. And she's like, bonk. And then he collapses to the ground and these photos fall out. And she's like, huh? Why does this guy have photos of me? That's weird. And then he's like, oh, I got them from a Mirage. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> she doesn't ever question that. Mm. Do you think she should have? Yeah. But then, uh, but then uh, yeah, he's taken back to the cell and locked up because she's going to try and figure out what to do with him. Meanwhile, Mal is uh, is sneaking through the camp, finds a way to free him by um, pulling down the jail wall with a car. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, look, if it works, it works, right? Mm, yeah. You, know, you got to make do. And it, uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty neato. I like one of the scenes when he's running around that it, it's like the old car with the jack at the front that you have mm, to wind yes. to get the car going. So he has to desperately do that while he's being shot at at one point, which I thought was very funny. I think that that's also when the chase starts because he's getting chased uh, and mm. there's this giant cannon somewhere in the base that's just like firing at him and it's uh, so many explosions. Oh yeah, they've got, they've got guns. Yeah, it's a good time. Uh, there was a pretty painful shot because I think Tong then jumps on a motorcycle and and rides away. There's a part Mm. where he kind of drives off this, like, small cliff, small hill thing. Yes, hill, like, jump, and then he, like, leaps into the air. (laughs) And he leaps into the air off the motorcycle. And then, like, the motorcycle falls to the ground. He, I think, lands on the motorcycle. The bike, the bike explodes. This, this chase stuff, I think they had some really crazy stunt drivers. Yeah. Like, they had actual drivers. Because, like, you could see people driving the things Mm. when these things go up. There's one where uh, he's driving the car. Yes. And he drives up, a like, a little ramp, and then the ramp explodes. Oh, yeah, that was And you could see the driver in the car as this happened Mm. when it, it, like, uh, explodes and rolls around and loses the roof and stuff. 
I'm pretty sure they actually had a person in there. As yeah. It, uh, as the explosion went off. I'm pretty sure there was some health and safety that was just ignored completely for these scenes. Yeah, which is definitely the case with that, like, small cliff scene as well. There's some dodgy stuff going on, but it looks good, so I'm going to give it a pass. Yeah, it looks amazing. looks amazing. I don't think anybody died from it, but no. uh, it was a bit more dangerous than it would have needed to be. Yes. But it was some really great shots. Like, Mal's car also goes off a massive cliff and just falls. Yes. Hundreds and hundreds of feet, and he's like, he manages to hold onto a rope. That was cool as well. Yep. That was a cool shot. It was very cool. Very cool. But Tong, uh, Tong's horse luckily followed this commotion, followed him on a motorcycle all the way out into the desert. So after his motorcycle explodes, he manages to get on his horse. He rides off, closely followed by Gaza Nova, though. And I think they must chase each other for a day. Yeah, they. Th- I think they chase each other for a couple of days into the desert or whatever. Yeah. For some reason. Because then they're both exhausted, starving, and dehydrated. <laughs> yes. And then that's when they decide to fight each other for some reason. Yes. After days of horse chasing. Yep. They're like, let's fight. But they not only fight. Yep. The horses fight as well. <laughs> the horses fight as well. Uh, which is uh, very funny. Yes. Uh, because they're fighting... Again, they're in the middle of the desert. Mm. They're dying of hunger and thirst. And this lady just wants to fight. She's she's nuts. She's goddamn crazy in these things. She, she gets, is. like... She goes full mad villain. She bites a chunk out of Tong's neck. Yes. She starts losing the fight and just decides to bite his neck and rip out a chunk of it. Yeah. And she just has bloody face for the rest of these scenes. And it's like... Holy crap, this lady's insane. It gets worse, because then, uh, after she manages to defeat the guy by biting his neck, mm. uh, we see that the other horse has won. Our, our, our horse. Yeah, the good horse. The good horse won, question mark. Is there a good horse? Uh, why are they fighting? The horses are, like, properly fighting as well. I want to know how they manage to get both those horses to fight. Yeah, they're kicking at each other. I think they grab each other's, like, neck at some point and do that standing up sort of tussle thing that they do. Mm. It's good. It, look, it looks good. Again, uh, Peter would have a heart attack. Uh, three heart attacks, yep. in fact, yep. watching this movie. Peter, Peter wouldn't survive this movie. No. But it looks good. And then uh, she's like, I'm going to kill that horse. <laughs> and he's like, no, don't do that. We don't. If you kill that horse, we don't have a way out of here. And she's like, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm evil, girl. Well, because she's thirsty, and she's like, I need water. So I'm going to drink this one's blood. But there's already a dead horse. There's, there's already, your dead horse. There's already a dead horse. You can drink that one's blood. Yeah, that was a strange moment. Well, I guess the horse has been dead for a couple minutes. It's cold now. What, what was the one? And then she's like, I'm going to kill this horse, and then I'm going to kill and drink its blood, and then I'm going to kill you and drink your blood. Why didn't you start with... I don't know, the guy you've just defeated, mm. and then ride the horse back, Yeah. then kill the horse. She's, um... She lacks so much logic <laughs> in this fight scene, it hurts. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. That was... There's no excuses for how silly that was. She's very dumb at the excuse of being very evil. Uh, so, so she stabs the horse's neck maybe like ten times, mm. and we see scenes of the horse lying down, as I mentioned, hyperventilating, like just just real mm. upset. That horse is having an awful day. Um, we never see her drinking the blood though, so that was good. Yep. So yeah, they continued to walk then on foot back to the base, uh, but she gets thirsty again, so she's like, "I'm gonna drink your blood." <laughs> Yep. And they fight, they tussle, they fall down a sand dune, and at the bottom of that dune <laughs> is a lake. Whoa! <laughs> they just happen to stumble across, like, some water. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. They drink the water, and then they get magically transported back to their base. Like, they were riding for maybe a day, at least, or maybe two days. They didn't get thirsty mm. again during that time. He does have a water bottle. We see that it runs empty, though. So maybe they just refill it. Maybe they have some uh, horse blood. She could have easily, yeah, like cut off one of the horse's legs and just carry that around. It's like, yeah, oh. get a good old munchy snack, like a lunchbox, you know? She's real evil. 
Gasson Yeah, Ulf she is evil. Us. She's unreasonably evil. I think what happens is that they actually find them in the desert. Like yeah, they maybe. Send horsemen after her. So yeah, they get taken back to the main base. And for some reason, she's like, hey, remember how I was going to drink your blood? Forget about that. I love you now. Let's get married. And he's like, no. Mm. He's like, that's a bad idea. He says that she doesn't have any humanity in her. She is a mirage. Which is a cheesy moment. But I think I liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's the climax of the thing. Yeah. Like, you, you, I shouldn't have been chasing you this whole time. Mm. No shit, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. You figured it the fuck out. Mm. Uh, so anyway, meanwhile, Mal has gone back to Annetta and her dad and her crew, and they all uh, team up to go and storm the bandit base and save Tong. So we just get a scene, it goes on for like 15 minutes, of just pure chaos. And it's great. Mal goes full Rambo. He's even got the, the handkerchief or whatever tying around his neck. They have an epic escape scene. Where, uh, Mao, he, he pours gasoline leading from, uh, the weapons cache, which he found earlier. We saw that in the movie. Mm. And then he pours gasoline around, but then Gaza and the main dude are fighting, and, uh, he's, he's getting thrown about mm. by Gaza. Gaza's kind of, kind of murdering this dude. Yeah, she's pretty good at fighting. She throws him through a window. Through a wall. Yep, through the window, through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Through the kitchen table and a mirror, I think. Many things. Just just smashes up this room. But then the sidekick's like, oh no, not not my friend. And so he comes to help. But then he's like, oh hey, look, it's the girl. Hey, look, it's the Mirage girl. <laughs> yeah, Mal is like, it's you. <laughs> oh, the Mirage girl. Wow. And then he get and then she shoots him. <laughs> she just point blank shoots him in the chest. And he's like, oh no. And then just some random bandit on a motorbike comes up and hits him with a motorbike just to make things yeah. worse. And so he's like, I guess there's nothing else for me to do but pour, but pour gasoline all over myself, light myself and fire, and then jump on a motorbike and just and ride into the heart of the base and then <laughs> blow up the entire base. <laughs> What an awesome scene. It's pretty good. What an epic scene. I was I was sitting there like, what? What is Whoa! Because <laughs> it went from zero to 100 yep. immediately. It was amazing. It was awesome. Like him getting on the motorbike after lighting himself in a fire is one yes. scene. He lights himself. He's on fire. He's actively on fire. He then rides off in a motorbike. It's all one long scene. Um, so mm. they 100% did that for real. And uh, it's impressive. It's great. And the whole base blows up. And that's the end of the movie. There's no epilogue. Uh, there's like a there's like a credits. They, they flash back to the movie or whatever. But there's nothing like... And then Tong and Annette lived happily ever after. Mm. It's just... No, it's the end of the movie. And that's good. I liked that they ended it again, but that also means Love Triangle, Pointless, shouldn't have been in the movie. So, yeah. Well, I think the idea is now that they've got to be together. Probably. But yeah, that's Mirage. Is it an oldie or a goodie? Or is it a dead goat award? It gets the dead goat award for poor animals. (laughs) Yeah. So is the dead goat award an award that we give to movies where there's just a lot of dead animals? (laughs) A lot of dead animals in this movie. Cool. That's a new thing we've got. (laughs) Sure, the Dead Goat Award, you know, why not? Yeah. Uh, Because otherwise, I mean, the movie's a January movie, I feel. Action's amazing, but the rest of the movie's eh. Yeah. Story's eh, it's weird, it doesn't make sense a lot of the time. I didn't, I didn't mind the plot. I mean, it's stupid, it's a dumb plot. it's very dumb. I didn't mind it so much. Yeah, same, but I don't know if it was good. Mm. Uh, I know the action was good. The action was very good. It was a good way to get the characters to the action. Yeah. The problem for me is, though, that whole section in the middle that doesn't really mean anything. That's the part where I'm like, uh, was this good? Because that takes up a lot of time. I don't mind the whole them running around in the desert part. Uh, and she's trying to drink his blood. As stupid as that is, I think that's kind of fun. So, I don't know. What are you going to rate it? I think you can rate it an oldie. Oh, okay. You can rate it a goodie, though. I think that's very fair. I'll go goodie, then. I think it does deserve at least a goodie. Mm. The action's really good. Yeah. It's probably one of those movies, kind of like Wheels on Meals, where watch clips from it, don't necessarily watch the whole film. 
unless you really want to. Definitely, I feel like I, I would watch the action clips again, mm. but not the actual movie. All right, well, now uh, it's it's what would you remove and what would you add to make this film better for you? I would add more dead goats. I feel oh. like we only had one, and I feel like uh, <laughs> one's not committing hard enough. Where would you add these dead goats? Everywhere. Oh. So at the start, <laughs> I feel like this is a this is not going to reflect mm. kindly on me in the future <laughs> if I say this. Go on, keep going, commit to the bit. <laughs> this is for a funny bit and not what I actually think. But at the start, you know when they they're shooting up things when yeah. they have the fight scene. Yeah. When Campbell gets shot. Why not a goat? Oh. Goat gets shot. You know. Would you have the goat get shot in the side of a? the screen or do you want a goat running across the battlefield purposefully being shown that this is a goat and then the goat gets shot yes yes okay like the camel no it's just like it's a one it's like two two second clip where it cuts to a goat and then it the goat is shot hmm. or alternatively no 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 the goat gets blown up by a grenade now that <laughs> now that's a spicy meatball <laughs> Uh, nice. I just have a goat in all the scenes. So you got a goat where she's just murdering horses. She yep. also murders a goat. She brought a goat with her. <laughs> Specifically two, too much on, but she yeah. ran out of goat, you know? And what would you remove? Uh, her being dumb. Oh. I hate it when characters are dumb in movies for the sake of something else. She's dumb for the sake of being evil, and I hate that. Just, just like, be evil, just be evil. and, like, murder for blood, but yeah. do it smart. Don't be dumb. Don't murder your horses, which is your one way of escaping, you know? Um, okay, so what would I remove? I'm making this an hour-long movie and removing that half hour when nothing happens. I'm just, I'm just in the editing suite. I just highlight it all, delete, gone. It's an hour-long movie now. It's fine, it's fixed. Um, let's add a fight scene where we see some backstory. I want to say backstory for maybe the Desert Queen where she's in a tent explaining to Tong what she is. And we see a backstory for her. Maybe it's a montage of her killing just lots of people. That's what I'm adding. I actually couldn't think of anything to add. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to add her. That's it. Maybe maybe an idea could be she's um, she's trying to find like some gold for the clan. So she goes into this cave where there's gold, where like... The people have been hiding gold. And she goes into the cave to steal the gold. But the problem is they've rigged the cave up uh, with some traps. Uh-huh. And so she's got to, yeah, go through the traps. It's like pressure points on the floor. She's got to go in the right ones. And she sees the gold. She gets to the end of this... Let's say it's in a cave. This long cave. And she gets to the end of the cave and the gold's there. And she takes the gold. But she replaces it. With a dead goat. Uh-huh. Right? Because it's under pressure thing. So she's got to, like... She's holding the dead goat, and she's holding the uh, and she's holding the gold, and she quickly swaps them over, but it doesn't help. Uh, are you going to go through the entire movie? A what? boulder comes <laughs> down bit? from the roof, and she's got to uh-huh. run from a boulder. Yep. But along the way, the boulder squashes a goat. <laughs> Man, I really hope people aren't offended by dead goats, because they're, they're not going to like this end bit of this. You know. <laughs> The oldie but a goodie show does not condone <laughs> goat murder. Condone goat Please don't murder goats. <laughs> All right, let's go through the checklist that we've got for 1987 movies. See if this film uh, has any of the tropes that the last two films have had. Is it bad porridge? Yes. Mm. None of this was good porridge. Dead goats make bad porridge. Fact. They do make bad porridge. Uh, sand makes bad porridge. You want to make yeah. a porridge out of sand? Bandits. Yeah. Shoulder. Ugh. Horse. Camel. Photos, mirages, although a mirage porridge could taste really nice, because that's all in your head. I guess. I'd still label that as bad porridge, because you're not actually getting any nutrients out of it. But there are people who have been out in the desert, had mirages of, like, food, and even though they're not actually eating the food, they have said that the food tasted, like, incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe I've read that in a fictional book somewhere. So, nice. Uh, that could be good porridge. <laughs> Potential good porridge. 
The other one is dumb characters. Mm. Does this film have, have dumb characters? Oh my god, does this, ca- this film have dumb characters? Yeah, the villain was very dumb, so that yeah. gets a big tick. Bad guy from foreign country. <laughs> wow. Well, that succeeded on that one. Ding, 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 ding. Russian lady. Mm. Boop, boop, boop. All the good guys live. Doesn't get that one. Mm. Mao dies. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a tragic death. Mm. So yeah, doesn't get that trope. Doesn't get that one. Uh, yeah, but it, that's that's a different trope. I I want this as an opposing trope to this one. Okay. Good guy sacrifices himself Ooh. for the other characters. Uh, this probably doesn't apply because of when this movie is set. But generator slash power outage. <laughs> Generator slash power outage. Nope. Doesn't get that. There's no power outage. And then finally, female lead falls in love with male lead. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. happened. That happened. Yep. Um, what else did you want to add? Are there any other tropes in this movie that you would like to add? No, to I got my one. I got my one. Character sacrifices themselves. We had that in the other one, I think. Uh, some of the other movies we've done. The good guy runs in to try and save mm-hmm. uh, the guys from the, the exploding bi- building. That Yes, that does happen. It was very close to a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, in critical condition, Richard Pryor sacrificed his career to make a movie. Oof. I can't think of any other tropes to add to this checklist. No, I think that's fine. So I think we're just going to move on. Uh, two. We could add animal abuse, but I don't want to do that. I'm adding it. <laughs> Dead animals. No, no, no. Oh. Well, so far... Kindred, dead animal. Yeah. Not in critical, but there was this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So an animal that dies that doesn't actually... Okay, all right. I was meaning more the animal characters in the movie, not not <laughs> on-set animal abuse. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, oh. I really hope not. Oh. That's not what I meant. Uh, <laughs> dead goat award let's go <laughs> dead goat award yeah um do you have any reviews for this next segment yes yes okay so welcome to rubber 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 raving reviews the part of the show where we get reviews from rotten tomatoes uh the audience reviews and sandro has to guess the scores i'll tell him the review he has to guess the score the scores go from 0.5 to 5 uh, this week it was very hard to find because there's like nothing on this mm. movie, but I've got a I've got a few reviews. So there you go. Uh, so we got uh, Diego. Diego. Diego says camera and sound are very well coordinated to make us feel what the characters are feeling. That's true. The story is not bad, but it feels too forced. Uh, I completely agree with that whole review. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go three out of five. Three out of five. It's three point five ah. out of five. You're very close. Very close. Very close. Steven says, tragically brilliant. Ooh. Mm. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Yep. Tragically brilliant. Tragically brilliant. That's pretty positive. I'm going to go four. Four? It's mm. actually five out of five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tragically brilliant. Loves it. Loves that movie. How is it tragically brilliant? Well, the main character dies at the end, remember, in the giant explosion? Yeah. Yeah. It's also pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick, bruh. Light yourself a fire explode. <laughs> Hell yeah, bruh. Uh, Scott says, uh, played well at TIFF. It tries hard to be a good movie, has its moments. Um, De Blanco is good in this. Liked the experience, but didn't love the movie. Was okay. <laughs> that might be a review for the 2018 movie Mirage. Oh, oh. Hang on, hang on. Wait. Let me look at the cast for the 2018 movie Mirage. Mm-hmm. De Blanco. No, there's no one called De Blanco in the 2018 yep. movie Mirage. Um, uh, so... Uh, what do you think they rated it? 3.5, I think. Ah, it was 4 out of 5. And finally, Matt says, Set in Macedonia, a boy constantly bullied in school and his, uh, his own home dreams of leaving uh, the fatherland. The film intensity gets a lot more uh, unstoppable waves of improbability and uh, drab fake realism. It also drags and feels soulless. That is not for the movie we just saw. <laughs> Spoiler alert, none of them were. Yeah, I Ooh, thought so. Dab, dab, dab. I pranked you. There was no Rotten Tomatoes. I couldn't <laughs> find garbage. I thought there wasn't any. <laughs> you know what there was? 
There was a whole lot of other movies called Mirage. <laughs> so I've got reviews from all the other ones. <laughs> the tragically the tragically brilliant one. I was like, that yeah, okay. The first one made <laughs> sense as well. See, I got some vague ones that didn't actually reference anything in the movie, except for the last one. <laughs> you got me there. You got me there. Anyway, that was two out of five. So, uh, the first review was from the 2018 one. Mm. The second one, the Tragically Brilliant, was from 2004. Oh, okay. The one you thought was from the 2018 one was actually from the 2014 movie. (laughs) Which was very funny that you were like, I think this is from the wrong movie. (laughs) Oh, no, it's not. (laughs) Mm. But it was. And then the last one was also from the 2004 movie. Yeah. Which was, like, one of the only uh, negative reviews I actually found for it. 2004 is actually pretty highly reviewed. Which is why it was tragically brilliant. I'm going to do a Rotten Tomatoes Raven review for you right now. I've got two reviews from Letterboxd. You're going to guess what they rated them. It's out of five. Point fives are available. I could have have gone for uh, another site, but I thought this would be funnier if I pulled up. Put a little hijinks. I said, oh, I found some reviews. And you're like, oh, did you? You managed to find some. I couldn't find it. Dax Stream says, those stunts, what the actual fuck? (laughs) Five out of five. Wait, 4.5 out of five. Ooh, right on the nail. 4.5 out of five. That is correct. Hey, nice, nice. This is from Lao Rhymes with Wow. The final 20 minutes contain some of the most craziest action I've ever seen, but the story doesn't conclude in a satisfying way. Also, the animal stuff seriously hampered my enjoyment of the movie. Three out of five. Yep, three out of five. Boom, boom, master of this game. All right, that's the episode. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like the show, thank you for listening as always. Um, number one way, way to help out is to tell a friend. Be like this. Go up to your friend and be like, friend, have you ever had goat's milk before? Uh, if they say yes, don't recommend this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you like goats? Yeah, I love goats. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> no, maybe listen to a podcast, but don't listen to episode 108, but listen to other episodes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're on all of the, the things. We're on Instagram, where sometimes there's uh, very well photoshopped pictures of us and the movies. Yep. The problem with this week's movie is there's no good screen grabs of it, so I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll make my own screen grab. I'll see. I'll see how I go. Um, I had I had an announcement. You have an announcement. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my own. I've got some merch coming up. Oh. It's called. Buy my shirt. I want you um, to buy my shirt. It's coming out soon. Hang on. So is the name of the t-shirt... Buy, wait, what? Buy my shirt. What, what, what's the link? You didn't send me a link for this. Buy my shirt. This is buy Zach's shirt. It's coming out. Uh, it was Facebook and email. Uh, links in the description. Yes. Speaking of buying shirts, you should buy the bonus episode. <laughs> Patreon.com. I'm just going to sit. Uh, I'm going to let that one sit for the world to enjoy for a second. Sometimes <laughs> you just shouldn't say things. Patreon.com forward slash oldie buddy goodie pod. Join the dad dad yep. club. Uh, price is $5 a month. Bonus episodes drop uh, next week. First one's out next week. Uh, Feb 1st. Never ending story two. Uh, you're picking next week's episode. All right. What's the options? Good, sir. Alan Quartermain and the Lost City of Gold. Wow, what a name. Yep, it is based off the book from the 1880s. Mm. Uh, it is a sequel to a movie called King Solomon's Mines. Ooh. And it's a, it's an adventure about an, an adventurous boy called Quartermain and he's looking for his long lost brother in Africa, but also a city of gold. Ooh, bonus gold, bonus city of gold. Love it. Uh, you've got Hot Shots. A yep. uh, sport movie about, about a guy who tries to befriend the greatest soccer player in the world. Sounds awful. Outrageous Fortune. Ooh. Comedy about two women who hate each other, but they've got to team up to find out the truth about a mysterious guy they both like. Oh, yeah. all right. And your final option is Radio Days, a Woody Allen, Woody Allen movie about the golden age of radio. Let's say no to that okay. one. Okay, no uh, Woody Allen. Let's do the first one. I like the first one. It's a sequel. you you got to watch the first one as well. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Why not? 
That sounds interesting. It has a great name. And you know how I like my mm. great names. So, uh, Alan Quartermain and the Lost City of Gold. So, if you're new to the show, the way we handle sequels are person who picks watches the first one and the sequel. Mm. The person who doesn't pick just watches the sequel. So, we try and find out how well it stands alone on its own. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Alan Quartermain, Lost cool. City of Gold. All right, let's do that. Uh, wrap it up with the best quote from Mirage, as we usually do. We've both got the same one. Do we want to try and say it at the same time? Our different quotes are like slightly different quotes. We just read them out at the same time. That sounds like a terrible idea, but all right. Yeah, sounds like the best. Three, two, one. Like I your know sweet your personality. Face You've as liked a kid. potatoes I told since you were a kid. It would make you you fart, knew it caused gas. You didn't and you listen. Didn't listen. <laughs> Perfect.